Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here and we're doing another Swiss Fate Reforged draft. Got one of those double rare packs, so uh, I've played with Infiltrator a couple times, I like it, but I think we're going to take the supplant form. Haven't gotten a chance to play it yet, but it seems really good. You get to bounce a creature at instant speed and put a token onto the battlefield's copy of it, so very, very strong effect. Um, instant speed copy effects of any creature on the battlefield you can bounce your own to copy it too but the fact that this is this just seems like such a big game shifting effect bounce your biggest creature copy it kill your second biggest creature like this feels like just a complete game flipper so i'm going to take supplant form here a couple other very good blue cards in here in infiltrator and surveyor but uh i don't have any problems first picking this awesome card trying it out Okay, follow-up pick. Well, Reach of Shadows is very good. If I take a black pick, though, I'm kind of limiting myself to Sultai only, which is, you know, it's okay. Um, I can do that. If I take Rage Form, I'm still more open to both Jeskai and uh, Teamer. If I take the Honor's Reward, I can only go Jeskai. Uh, I'm pretty tempted to just take the Reach of Shadows regardless. Um, I could take the Reality Shift. I haven't played this yet, and I'm kind of interested in seeing what it can do. And it still leaves me more open to Teamer, Jeskai, or Sultai. Um, I think Reach is probably better for the most part, but actually Exiling can take care of some that indestructible... Say, I I'll give Reality Shift a try. I haven't tried, like, I haven't gotten a chance to try it yet. I don't think it's as good as Reach of Shadows, but I like staying open to three different tribes in my second pick, or clans, rather. Um, okay. So, Whisper of the Wilds is one of the better uh, green cards, because it ramps. One of the better green commons, I should say. There's Whisk Away, which is actually a card I like. Um, it can be a, Whisk Away can be a great tempo card. Um, but Whisper... Moving into green-blue still leaves me open to both Sultai and Teamer, uh, both of which are good. But I do like Whisk Away. I do think this is a good card. It's a pretty good tempo play. Um, and it's still, I mean, staying open is not terribly important if you get a really good card like Whisper of the Wilds that ramps. So I do see a pretty solid argument for that, but I kind of like the Whisk Away. I'm going to take the Whisk Away. I think the main reason to stay this open is just in case you open that really awesome rare that you want to, that you really want to jam. All right, Hunt the Weak is good removal, but not that good when you don't have any creatures. Serial Ambush is fine. Right of Undoing, so... Bounce an online permit you control and target an online permit you don't control. I mean, right of undoing is pretty good. I, what I like about it is, in response to your removal, I'll bounce whatever you were going to kill and bounce your biggest guy. Like, I haven't gotten a chance to try it yet. Um, it's typically a pretty good effect, and I think bouncing this format's better than it usually is. There is also Lotus Eye Mystics, which would move me into just sky, but is a good card, certainly. Um... Enhanced Awareness is a card I also like. I'm going to try this Rite of Undoing out. I, I'm, I'm a fan. We're going to start to see what's really open here as we get later in the picks anyway. All right, Typhoid Rat still kind of limits me to Sultai. Formless Nurturing um, might be fine. It'd be our first creature that's not a creature card. Um, not, I guess, the best if I'm starting to move into Teamer or... Sultai. Well, it's actually, it's pretty good for Sultai. I could see the argument there, because you want a lot of cards to delve. Um, but if I'm moving into Sultai, maybe I just want the Angler, because it's bigger. Uh, but Formless Nurturing also leaves me open to Teamer still, which might be right. So Formless Nurturing leaves me more open. I'd probably just take it here. Uh, okay. Could have taken the seven drop big dude too. Cast huge stone retainers only if you've cast another spell this turn. All right, it's actually a pretty decent card. 
Uh, Shifting Loyalty is a card I like. Dowson Gloom might be correct here. It's a pretty good removal spell in general. It does officially move me into uh, Sultai. If I, well, yeah. No, it does, because I'm definitely blue. And if I take a black pick, then the only clan that's available to me is Sultai. But I actually like Sultai. I don't know. Some people aren't a fan, but I'm a, I'm a big fan of Sultai. I'm going to take Dowson Gloom. It's a good removal spell. I like that it kills morphs, gains life. It's a good tempo card, good removal. Just a good card. I think that huge stone retainers is actually pretty good, too. But we're going to take Dowson Gloom and be less reliant on uh, playing two spells in one turn. All right, archers are fine. Not amazing. I wish you could attack with them. I think Feral Crew Shock's probably just the best. There is a Swiftwater Cliffs, but I don't think I really need that. Yeah, I think Crew Shock's good. It's a nice big fat creature. Doesn't have Delve or anything, but just a nice reliable dude. Okay, so I could take the Sibzig Host, but I think we'll actually take the Skull Keeper. It's our main color, and it does fit with Sultai quite well, so seems fine. There is another Rite of Undoing, um, but I'm going to take this Skullkeeper. It just seems to fit the Sultai clan the best. Okay, I think it, here it's a pretty easy Thornwood Falls. Um, all the rest of the cards are kind of take it or leave it for what we're trying to do. Like, Shadow Spear is a good aggressive card, but we're not going to be aggressive if we're Sultai, I'm not thinking. I mean, we can be, but it's not often. The Rune Mark's good, but and the archers are playable, but and Ancestral Vengeance is a good like sideboard card, but let's take the Thornwood Falls pretty happily here. Okay. Um not really a huge fan of Tassiger's cruelty. I could take the Rakshas's Disdain or Ancestral Vengeance. There's a chance I play the Disdain if I get some more self mill cards, but Yeah, like Scout the Borders and stuff. Yeah, I mean Disdain could be Main deckable, possibly. All right, renowned weaponsmith. I think we're we can play the muck draggers. I actually don't think muck draggers is that good of a card, but um, I don't think renowned weaponsmith is very good either. I haven't even I can't even recall what vial of dragonfire does. That must be from from fate reforged. But heart piercer bow is not even a good card, so I don't even like it. Uh, Thrill ambush seems good. Yeah, uh, Thrill Ambush is, is fine. Puts a card in the graveyard for Delve and gives you a couple creature spells, or creature cards to, to work with without actually being a creature card. So it does work well for both Delve and Prowess. I don't like Fascination very much. Second Disdain, I don't like that much either. Guess we'll take the Cruelty. I don't think it's likely I would play two Rakshas's Disdain. All right, Ambush, Crotique. Not that great of a card, but certainly playable. I might have some good into the battlefield effects. Or actually, what I like about it, I guess, is uh, what I do like about Ambush Grotique is you can bounce uh, manifest spells. So manifesting a spell that you're never going to be able to flip over. It's kind of nice to be able to. Uh, it's kind of nice to be able to return it to your hand and cast it. All right, let's see what we got here. There's a dead drop. Certainly fine. There's a Bitter Revelation, which may actually be better. And then there's Embodiment of Spring, which I also really like. I think we probably first picked the Bitter Revelation. I like Dead Drop, too. But uh, what I like about Bitter Revelation is it's always a good card, even if you're not in Sultai, but it's best in Sultai. Gives you card advantage, fills your yard. We don't have any card draw currently. And I think there's a good chance we table Embodiment. It's not a super popular card if you're not in Sultai. It's fine for Teamer, but much better for Sultai. And I just don't think we need to first pick it. It it does table quite often. So let's take the Bitter Revelation, which is more common than the Dead Drop, but I think more useful than the Dead Drop too. So let's take it. I'm going to need some more finishers, but that's usually not too terribly difficult. All right, here's a Woolly Loxodon. Pretty tempted to take that. There's a Dismal Backwater. But I'm actually a bigger fan of Loxodon than I think most people are. I love this card. It's one of the better morphs, in my opinion. Um, just a great early and late game finisher. Or something to trade early if you don't think you can get to it. I'd like the Backwater, too, for fixing. But um, I just really, I'm a huge Willy Loxodon fan. So I think I'm just going to take it here. 
Okay, Glacial Stalker, second Bitter Revelation. Uh, Bitter Revelation is certainly playable in multiples. It does start to get a bit worrisome um, if you don't have any lifelink, which we currently don't. Otherwise, Glacial Stalker is fine. Certainly not amazing, but playable. Smoke Teller is just a two-drop. We probably table it. I guess I'd take a second Bitter Revelation. So now my deck really just needs to have some more early control. Because um, I can win through card advantage. So I guess I need some early control. And then I need... Because um, I do have some decent removal already. Or at least tempo-y stuff. Um, I definitely wish I had that Reach of Shadows now instead of the Reality Shift, but that's okay. I think I'm taking a second Bitter Revelation. Yeah, otherwise I'm taking a Glacial Stalker. Okay. Alright, Sultai Soothsayer is an awesome card. Pretty happily picking that up here. Good card advantage. Good just mounting a defense. I'd like some more Delve cards, because currently we are only rocking Right of Undoing and Subzik Muck Drackers. So I'd like some Hooting Mandrills or Sultai Scavengers if at all possible, but we'll see if that works out. There's also Mystic and Rite of the Serpent, both of which are playable, but not really on the same level as Sultai Soothsayer. All right, I love the Sultai Charm, so I'm pretty happily taking it here. There's another Embodiment, which I would like to have, but not over a good Charm. I think actually Sultai Charm got better as well uh, because... Uh, artifacts and or the enchantments rather are more popular. Okay, so I could take the flock, which is good early defense. Um, I'm pretty tempted to take a second Loxodon though, and then I'm just like good on finishers. Like I don't even have to run ambush critique after that. So that would really allow me in pack three to just focus on cheaper stuff. Like flock is good defensively, and it is a card that I want. But if I get a second Loxodon here, I'm kind of like set on on good late game finishers and it's like you can return it with this if they have an answer to it i think it's pretty good i mean we're likely playing 18 lands anyway so i think it'll pan out well like parapet here could not be more perfect it's in one of our main colors it blocks well it buys us time to get card advantage it can ping our opponents down it really is like exactly what we want Okay, I think I'm just going to slam the Dismal Backwater here. We already have 20 playables that I'm really not unhappy with. Um, we're a little bit short. I mean, Disdain I probably don't have to main deck since we don't have a ton of of self-mill currently. Um, Archers of Carsey, take it or leave it in the main deck. I don't really like Defender that much, especially with the two toughness. It's just not, it's not exactly what I want, I don't think. So I'm going to cut it for now. And I'd prefer to not play the Ambush Grotique either, but pretty happily taking this Mana Fixer. Alright, so I can take the Embodiment now. I think that's actually perfect for us. Ramps us, fills our yard, uh, protects us occasionally. Otherwise, a Flock or a Witness. Probably a Flock, just another defensive spell would be fine. But Embodiment's a great card, so pretty happily taking that. Alright, I actually like Dragon Scale Boon. Tygum Scheming is playable, but we don't have a ton of Delve. And Wetland Sandbar, also playable, but I don't really like it that much right now. And I don't think it's got anything on... I think Dragon Scale Boon's just a better card. Okay, I can take Smoke Teller. Fine with that. It's not amazing, but certainly playable if I need it. Um, so, Finishers, Double Loxodon, Supplant Form, Feral Crew Shock. Uh, I could use like an, another kind of exciting finisher. But our removal looks good, our card advantage looks great, double bitter revelation, Sultai Charm, Whisk Away, Douse and Gloom, Reality Shift, uh, very good cards. I don't really need any of these, and I kind of want my opponent to play Molting Snakeskin, because I have good removal, bounce effects and such. So I think I'll just hate a War Behemoth, which we're not going to play either. So 20 playables currently. We really could use a couple more good Delve spells because I feel like we have good Delve enablers. Yeah, a second embodiment is a welcome sight. Really happy they're both tabled kind of as expected. Like I said, these cards are, are really not... Well, we don't need a Weave Fate, so we'll take it, but we're not going to play it. It's just the less good version of Bitter Revelation for our deck, I think. Um, but yeah, embodiment is just fantastic for Sultai, and it's just really not a very popular card outside of it, so just really nice. 
All right, Sultai Soothsayer and Hooting Mandrills would ordinarily be first pick, but we're just going to take Bloodstained Mire, which, believe it or not, is actually playable for our deck, which is kind of nice, and is actually good for our deck. Um, I know I'm just busting excuses. Like, if this were a PTQ, I'd probably just first pick a Mandrill since it seems to be perfect for what we're trying to do. But the reason I'm taking the Bloodstained Mire is it's worth tickets, and it also gets to be played in our deck since it uh, makes our Delve spells cheaper, if I manage to get it early, that is. I'd also like the Ruthless Ripper, the Krumar Bonkin. I think the point is we're going to table something good out of this, whether it be Ripper, Soothsayer, Mandrills, Bonkin, even Highland Game. I would probably play over Smoke Teller. So there's like just a lot of cards that we can table. All right, Meandering Tower Shell is playable. It's a pretty good defensive card, I guess. I don't really like Meandering Tower Shell that much. It's like a little bit too slow. It's actually more like a lot too slow. Um, otherwise I'd take a third Loxodon. I could just take a second Parapet. It's probably more exciting than the Flock. Um, I mean, Tower Shell, like I said, playable, not amazing. I don't need more than a couple Parapets, I think, for early protection against the aggro stuff. Okay, let's take the parapet. I'm fine with that. Ooh, well, there's a nice finisher. All right. Slamming the Villainous Wealth. Over Treasure Cruise, over Miss Fireweaver, over Force Away, over Abomination. A lot of good cards in here, but now we our ramp gets better and playing 18 lands gets much better. We're rewarded for Flood much more. I actually just love Villainous Wealth in general. It's a great finisher. Uh, let's figure out our first cut, though. Um... Maybe the Smoke Teller. It is an early game play, but uh, it's kind of a take it or leave it sort of thing. There is a Throttle in here I kind of want. More removal. Otherwise, a Bonkin is fine. Um, creature cards we currently have are Nurturing and Ambush as well. So we really have like 12 creatures, but two of them are embodiments. So I think we're looking for better creatures for sure. Teamer Charger is a fine two drop. I, I think we probably just take the Throttle. Um, because it's just good removal. It is another five drop, but it might even be better than Rite of Undoing. Just Guy Elder seems good in one of our main colors, but there is a Mandrills. Which I think might be better. I think Mandrills just is something our deck really wants. It's going to really reward us for early embodiment plays. Uh, early, like, Sultai Skullkeeper. Um, bitter Revelations are going to make him just substantially cheaper, too. Uh, so I, I love the Elder, too. And two drops are a premium, and Prowess is good. That's really tough. I, I just think Mandrills is probably better for us. Because it gives us another way to get a cheap, fat dude out there. And, I mean, either way, we're taking a creature, but I, I think I am taking the Mandrills. I want that Elder really bad, but I just think I want the Mandrills more. All right, Air of the Wilds is a fantastic card. Very happily picking that up here. i got to start figuring out what we're cutting at this point, because I think there's just cards we don't need. Like Rite of Undoing, I said it was fine. It is fine, but I can take it or leave it compared to the better removal that we have. Plus, we have enough, like, I mean, it's not technically a 5-drop if you can play it more cheaply, but... I think it's just a situation where I can cut it and not be, not have a problem with that. Um, do I want to play 17 lands because I have double embodiment? I really don't because of the Villainous Wealth, but it's one of those situations where I guess we'll see. I'm just going to take the Air of the Wilds pretty happily here. Uh, Crippling Chill is a fantastic card. I'm going to take that over the Dragon Scale Boon and the Wetland Sandbar. Not 100% sure we're playing it yet, but it is a fantastic card in almost any deck you can imagine. Crippling, yeah, I mean, as long as you're running blue, of course, but awesome card. Very awesome card. Um, I, I, you know, I, I honestly like it. I think I like it more than Whisk Away since it's just more versatile. You don't have to wait for attacks or blocks. You get to draw a card off of it. I probably play Crippling Chill over Whisk Away. We'll see if I can do both, but I probably play it over Whisk Away. All right. Water World's a pretty powerful card, too. I could take this. I'm not sure if I'm going to play it, but we'll take it. It is powerful. Soothsayer tables. I kind of want a second Soothsayer. Like, I would slam that over Ethereal Ambush or something. 
Um, just a quicker way to find villainous wealth, I guess, in a pinch. We have a lot of self mill at this point, admittedly. Well, I guess we don't have a ton. The Skull Keeper, the uh, Bitter Revelations. Highland game is fine, but I think we're actually good on two drops. At this point, I... I Alright, I think I'll take the flock, I guess. It's just another blocker. I mean, Contemplation actually seems fine in here. Dread Maws become less attractive, but it might actually be good in this deck. We have some pretty high toughness dudes. Yeah, with the Parapet. Yeah, I think Dread Maw is actually pretty good for this deck. Seeing Bell Strike is at, at its worst in uh, Sultai, but I guess we'll take it for sideboarding if I need it. Neither of these cards we really need. I don't need a second Weave Fate in my sideboard if I'm not playing the first. Whatever. Okay. So we have to make some cuts, which is always the best problem that you can ask for in a draft. So really, we just have to establish um, the number of finishers we need, the number of card advantage we need, the number of removal we need, and then we'll sort from there. So I keep kind of early picking this reality shift, which in hindsight I do wish was a Reach of Shadows. But uh, how good is reality shift? I really don't know. I mean, the, you can potentially give them a 2-2, or you can use it defensively for a 2-2 in response to a removal spell. I think that's better than people give it credit for, but still, like I said, Reach of Shadows is going to be a more powerful card since it's, uh, I mean, it's also more expensive, keep that in mind, but it does have a more, Im it's got more impact. Uh, so this is a creature spell, Ethereal Ambush is a creature spell, Double Bitter Revelation, um, I, all this removal is good, a lot of three drop removal, this is more like, a, you know, However expensive it can be, it's going to be better. 28 cards. So we could make 5 cuts and play 17 lands with double embodiment. I think I can probably get away with that. Our mana base isn't too shaky. We have, I guess we only have 2 fixers, so maybe it's a little more rocky than I thought. But the argument I kept saying was, like, there's really no reason to not play 18 lands. Here's why. We have double Bitter Revelation, double Sultai Suits there. So why do you want your deck to why do you want to risk the chance of um you know getting mana screwed when you can pretty easily get your card advantage back through double bitter revelation double sultai suits there like it just rewards you for having a ton of mana because we have some good late game stuff to double oxidon mandrills like maybe i cut the flock i probably have enough early stuff i don't need that defensively maybe we cut the whisk away and the reality shift, because then we're still left with Crippling Chill, Dowsing Gloom, Sultai Charm, Boon, Throttle, Water World. I'm like, we still just have all of the removal in the world. Reality shift is still one I want to try. I, I guess Whisk Away we can cut. I don't have any problems with it, but uh, I'd probably rather have like a Boon or something that can, I, I don't know, I've come to love Dragon Scale Boon quite a bit at this point. I really do like that card a lot. It can be a big game flipper. Um, like put it on an air of if you dragon scale boon an air of the wilds suddenly it triggers its own ferocious when it attacks attacks for five it's very good um, this deck looks great by the way it looks very strong there's a lot of powerful stuff I'm, I'm very happy with the rares we got I think our finishers are fantastic our card advantage is great I think I cut this ethereal ambush I've, got, I've probably got enough 5 drops, and the 5 drops I have I think are actually better than Ethereal Ambush. Even Feral Crew Shock is just another uh, good price for body. Um, yeah, just a really good cost. And you can play it on like turn 4 with an Embodiment, which is very good. Parapets look just fantastic in this, um, alongside all, all of our card advantage. So I really do like the way this deck looks. Maybe we are cutting the Reality Shift. Uh, currently rocking 14 creatures, including Formless Nurturing, so I guess I would prefer to not cut another creature. I mean, Sibzig Muck Draggers, Muck Draggers maybe the, the least interesting, but um, we can bring back one of our finishers with it. Like, if you look at our finisher creatures, it's Double Loxodon, Mandrills, Crew Shock, really, are the only ways we have to kill our opponents uh, effectively. So Muck Draggers being able to bring it back seems like it could be pretty good. We'll see. I that's you know it's up for debate. I haven't played the Muck Draggers yet, but I think they're 
playable and probably fine. As yeah, as a way to get even more card advantage. Um, do we run the risk of self-milling ourselves out? You know, it's actually possible in this deck. Double Revelation, double Soothsayer. We're certainly not a deck that's going to win very fast. We're, we're much more of a mid-range, win-through-the-late-game sort of game plan. Um, let's cut the Reality Shift, I guess. I did want to play that card, but I just think our other removal and tricks are, are going to be more impact. Like, it's nice that this takes care of anything, but... Cribbling Chill locks a creature out for two turns and draws you a card, which is just excellent. Um, two more cuts or one more cut? I did say two more cuts. Maybe the Water Whirl? Very powerful, but certainly not more powerful than Supplant Form. So, alright, we'll cut that. And then one more cut if I want to play 18 lands. Jeez. I mean, I can cut the Formless Nurturing. It fits our curve very nicely. I don't really want to cut either of our Revelations or either of our Soothsayers for sure. They just seem too important. Hmm. I don't want to cut any of my 3-drop removal. Maybe I do cut the Boon, but I really do love that card. I guess I cut Boone. All right, we ended up cutting a ton of tricks, which I'm not thrilled about, but look at our deck. I mean, it just looks really good. It really does look good. Our removal is still fantastic, even after cutting a ton of it. Sultai Charm, Dowson Gloom, Crippling Chill, Throttle, Supplant Form. We have five very good pieces of removal. We have excellent early game defense, so we can kind of be picky where we use our removal, I'm hoping. We don't have a ton of reach. So flying is gonna uh, flying is gonna be a problem. So it's almost like we need to save our removal for the flyers. Uh, we don't even have flying defense besides this uh, archers out of sideboard. So yeah, I, I mean I think this is good. There's certainly an argument for the 17 lands because we have the double embodiment. But I my argument once again double bitter revelation double soothsayer is just an amazing way to find the spells you need when you have excess mana. Um, so, and Villainous Wealth, once again, what a better way to reward Flood than, okay, I'll just, you know, do Villainous Wealth for 7 against my opponent with 10 mana or something. Um, alright, let's, let's combine. So, we really just need to, we're, we're a survivor deck, we just need to survive long enough. Sort by color. Ooh, we're more of a mix of the three colors than I realized, um, but we definitely want to be base blue-green and then splash the black, so... The reason we're splashing the black is we have the uh, embodiments, which as long as we have our green and blue mana, we're always going to be able to find our black. We have the Dismal Backwater and the Bloodstained Mire as a couple black sources already. So I probably only need to play two swamps, maybe. Maybe I play three swamps. We'll see. If I play three swamps, that's five black sources. And then I can go up to eight blue, seven green. Eight blue, seven green. What do I think of that? I kind of want to play my green early. I think I'm actually going to go back to... F uh, this This is uh, this is debatable, of course. So, someone could have an argument that I should be playing more black. They might not be wrong. But uh, because of the double embodiment, it's more like we have six sources of black, in my opinion. And because all of my early game is blue and green... And all of my mid game is uh, black. I mean, I want to play Dowson Gloom, I guess, on turn three. But um, if I can't, it's it's no problem. I'm almost positive I'll find a target for it anyway. So the reason I'm I'm doing my mana base like this, I want to be able to consistently hit my embodiment of of spring, both sides of it. I want to be able to play it on turn one and crack it on turn two. So just making sure I've got eight eight blue, eight green, four black. Um, I should be able to, it's six black with the double embodiment, so I should be able to hit all of my colors that I need to, to hit, um, at least I'm hoping. And uh, like I said, the deck does look very good. A lot of powerful spells, a lot of uh, mana sinks. So um, we're going to try it like this, and uh, yeah, I'll see you round one.